an old model steam engine which was made circa 1896. This is part 3. Is the repaired crankshaft going to be ok? If I make a new one then the engine will not be from 1896. The way that I show the start of this job is unorthodox and a bit tricky. Plus resoldering the broken crosshead support to the cylinder. I mentioned in the first episode that this was going to be a bit of a challenge and it certainly is. It's basically made out of brass and bits of steel. Some of these bits of steel are far too small in my opinion. Which is probably why it looks like this. A broken bunch of bits. But then again it has survived from 1896 onwards. I mentioned in the heading that fixing the crankshaft was going to be a bit unorthodox and indeed it is. In the previous episode I showed the straightening of the crankshaft which was, well, fairly successful. Now it's time to put it all together using some Loctite 638 to stick the crank pin into the crank web that it's fallen out of. To keep the crank webs in line I'm using a spring clamp as you can see here. Again it's very unorthodox and very unengineering like but it is actually doing the job. I left it for 24 hours to make sure that the Loctite 638 had cured. This crankshaft is never going to be as accurate as one that I could currently make, but it defeats the object of doing this job if I make all new parts. I think it will be okay. It's never going to be a Rolls Royce, but you can't have everything. I'm holding it in the chuck from the other end, and the only part that I'm interested in is a small crank pin between the two crank webs and that actually looks ok. I intend to pin all these parts together and once I've done that I'll be able to make some fine adjustments by bending bits and pieces by hand. I really don't think that the pulley is exactly in the centre of the crankshaft. Time now to resolder the mounting block for one of the crosshead guides because it's floating free. When I move the crosshead guides outwards you can see that the block is attached to the crosshead guides and it really shouldn't be. There is evidence of some past repairs. I'm hoping that the modern solder I'm going to use, coupled with the fact I'm going to really clean up the part, should make it stable. For the cleaning up I'm using a rotary scouring pad. And then, before I remove the bolt that holds the parts together, I'm going to tin the end of the block. Doing this using a small blowtorch lifts all the dirt to the surface. So making sure I'm not in the line of fire so to speak, while the solder on the part is still molten, I reuse the rotary tool to clean it up and I get through to proper clean metal. Then I did the same at the cylinder end. You can see a couple of fillets of solder, but this is not enough. I'm using electrical multi-core solder because it's convenient and it's usually quite a strong joint. And here it's flowing into the joint and looking quite good. When I first looked at this engine I wondered why the cladding was black at one end only. Now I know, it's from soldering jobs in the past. After quite a lot of messing about finally I got a good joint and I could remove the bolt that holds the crosshead guides to the block. These fixings are very strange by modern standards apart from being square with pointy ends it's anybody's guess what the thread is. I removed the cylinder assembly because the cylinder bolts were slack and the cylinder was rattling about on the plate. I turned the cylinder around to face the camera so you can see the black part where the bracket has been soldered to the cylinder definitely more than once. The only trouble with using new solder is it's very bright and shiny and I don't want it to be bright and shiny so what I've done is squirted a little bit of satin black paint onto a piece of cardboard and I'm just using a screwdriver point to roughly spread it on the part just to make it blend in with the existing parts. As I mentioned in episode 1 I'm not going to clean up this engine it's really not worth it, it is what it is. Here I'm applying a little bit more paint I'm not even using a paintbrush, just a screwdriver point. I'm pleased to say that this bracket appears to be firmly attached to the cylinder. I applied a bit of side pressure to it and it didn't fall off which is always a good thing. While the crudely applied paint was drying on the bracket I turned my attention to the next job 
and this is not easy. I'm drilling 1 16th of an inch diameter holes all the way through the crank web and the crank pin. I'm also going to do exactly the same at the other end of the crank web and through the crank shaft. But that's it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.